Alright, this is lesson 7.4, adding and subtracting rational expressions with binomial and trinomial denominators. Let's get started here. The strategies for adding and subtracting rational expressions with monomial, so essentially what we did last unit, denominators can be used to add and subtract rational expression with binomial and trinomial denominators. So in case you forgot, an example of a binomial would be like, for instance, you could have x plus 2, and an example of a trinomial here would be you could have like x squared plus 4x. Uh, minus 4, something like that. All right. Um, so, to determine uh, a common denominator, what we need to do is you need to factor all of the denominators. Then write the product of the different factors with the greatest exponent of each factor. All right. So let's take a look at some examples. Again, like many of them, uh, we're going to just uh, learn through doing these examples. Uh, like all of them, I start out with doing my non-personal values first, so my NPVs. So for this one, my NPVs, you'll note that we have P cannot equal, it'll be a positive 2, and P cannot equal negative 1. Okay, so basically, if you recall, all you do is you just take your denominators and set them not equal to 0. Okay, so those ones are pretty easy. Now from here, I would notice that my LCD is basically the two denominators that I have right there, right? So I can put it all over one denominator if you want. I'll have P minus 2 all multiplied by P plus 1. And so what I see then is the terms on the left-hand side here, the P minus 1 all over P minus 2, well, what is that denominator missing? That denominator is missing a P plus 1, so I'm going to multiply it by a P plus 1 right here. And the other side, the p plus 3, it's missing a p minus 2, so it gets multiplied by a p minus 2, like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute out the numerators here, and then gather my like terms. So p times p gives me p squared, noticing that this is a difference of squares, the middle p's will cancel out. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1, plus p squared. Uh, p times the negative 2 is negative 2p, and then a 3p gives you a positive 1p, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. All over your common denominator, p minus 2, all multiplied by p plus 1. Lastly, gathering my like terms, I have 2p squared plus p minus 7, all divided by p minus 2, multiplied by p plus 1. Okay. So that would be my uh, final answer like that. Notice how I wrote them again in descending order of powers. I always start out with my MPVs. Once you have that, you're good to go. Okay, let's try next one. This one you might want to try on your own. Uh, it's always good to be able to do these on your own rather than just watching me. Don't want you to fall uh, into a lull and just uh, be unhappy with what I do here. So give it a try, see how you do, um, and then fast forward to the end. So start with your non-personal values. These ones are a little bit more complicated, your MPVs here. When you do this, I'll take e minus 3, and I'll set it not equal to 0. When you move the 3 to the other side, notice that we get e cannot equal 3. So that's one of them. On the other one here, we have 9 minus e squared cannot equal 0. But this time, I'm going to actually move the e squared to the other side, because then it comes positive. Now, in order to get e by itself, I will take the square root, and we get e cannot equal plus or minus 3. Okay? So basically, that ends up being your restriction, because that essentially deals with this one as well. So as long as e is not a positive or a negative 3, we are going to be good to go. So. Uh, next thing I would need to do here is they always say the first step that I want you to do is I want you to factor. So the left-hand side right here, this first expression, it's good to go. But let's go now and factor the second denominator here. 9 minus e squared. We should be noticing, hopefully the bells are going off in your head, that this is a difference of square. So I'm going to write it as 3 minus e, so the square root of the first term and the second term, and then 3 plus e like so. So now it's a matter of I need to address what my common denominator is. All right, And so, well, let's see here. Do you have anything that's common? Well, what I would notice is that e minus 3 and 3 minus e, those are almost the same, but not quite, right? If you were to factor out, though, a negative 1 from this part right here, you notice I will be able to turn those into the same thing. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to leave the left-hand side the same right here. But I'm going to change this to be a plus. And when I change that to be a plus, what I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to multiply 
all this by a negative 1. When you multiply by a negative 1, you see that you will get now e, e changes to b from negative e to positive e, and the 3 changes from being positive to negative, e minus 3, on to 3 plus e. All right. So now that we've achieved um, some part of this denominator that's the same, now we can combine them. So what will your common denominator, common denominator be? Well, we have an e minus 3 on the one side, and we have a 3 plus e on the other side. So that means my first term over here, the 2, what is it missing from its denominator? It's missing a 3 plus e, so that means you have to multiply the 2 by a 3 plus e. Okay. Now what I can do is we can just use the distributive property, multiply these together. We have 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2e, plus 3e, all over my common denominator. Make sure you write this every single time. And the last thing I would do right here is notice that you can gather the like terms. And how many e's do we have? We have 5e plus 6, all over e minus 3, and 3 plus e. Or you could write it as even e plus 3. Okay, let's go take a look on the next page at uh, what we got left over here. So now, we've dealt with binomials. Now I'm going to kick it up a notch, and we're going to deal with the trinomials. Right? So again, uh, the first thing I would normally do for something like this is I would go and uh, state my MPVs. But before you do that, you're going to find it's going to be a little bit easier if you just uh, ignore the MPVs for a second here and go and factor it. Because once we factor this, then you'll be able to see your MPVs a little bit easier. So if I factor the first term here, the x squared minus 49, you'll notice that's a difference of squares. So you get x minus 7 and x plus 7. Okay. And the other trinomial, or the only trinomial over here we have is x plus 7, all multiplied by x plus 7. Okay. So, dealing with my MPVs now, let's look at this first one over here. Notice that x cannot equal 7 or negative 7, and over here x cannot equal negative 7, so my MPVs would be x cannot equal plus or minus 7, so you've dealt with that. Okay. Now let's go and try and simplify this. I'll get myself a common denominator. Noticing that each one of them has an x plus 7, so I'll put in an x plus 7. The one on the left side has an x minus 7, and the one on the right side has another x plus 7. That would be my common denominator. So that means the 7 needs to be multiplied by what it's missing. It's missing one of those x plus 7s, and the 3, it's missing one of the x minus 7s. Right now, using the distributive property, I get 7x plus 49 plus 3x minus 21 all over. Noticing I have 2x plus 7s, I'm going to write as x plus 7 all squared multiplied by x plus 7. And the next thing I'll do right here is I will gather my like terms. When I gather my like terms, I have 10x's, 49 minus 21, that gives me a plus 28 all over x plus 7 all squared all multiplied by x minus 7. And the last thing you could do to go one more step further is this is a unique situation that in the numerator, the 10x and the 28, it does have a 2 that you could factor out, leaving you with 5x plus 14 all over that common denominator of x plus 7 squared and x minus 7. Okay, So whenever you can factor something out like that at the end, I'd like you to try. That just turns out that that was the first one that we've been able to do that for. Okay, So the next one we have here. Again, what I would encourage you to do is try and factor it first, and then you can look after your NPVs. So when we do that, we have n minus 3, and we will factor this. So this one's fairly easy to factor. We're looking for numbers that multiply to give you negative 18 that have a sum of 3. That would be positive 6 and negative 3. And uh, what do we have over here? We have minus n minus 2. Factoring this one, we have numbers that multiply to give you negative 20 that have a sum of 1. That would be 5 and 4, make the 5 positive, the 4 negative. Okay. Now, uh, from here, I would do my MPV. So let's put this over here in blue, your NPVs. Notice that on the left-hand side we have n plus 6. That means n cannot equal negative 6. n cannot equal 3. n cannot equal negative 5. And n cannot equal 4. Hopefully you're noticing that those just end up being the opposite of basically what you see in the brackets there. Now, another unique situation is that right here in factored form, I notice that the n minus 3s, as we've done before, those can cancel. And so that will make things a lot more uh, easy for you in, uh, in terms of the simplifying here. Because what it's going to do is it's going to make your common denominator a lot smaller. And so now what we do here is we need to achieve a common denominator. So what's it going to be? It's going to be all of these binomials that we have right here. So we have an n plus 6, and we have an n 
plus 5, and we have an n minus 4. So the 1, what was it missing its common denominator? It's missing both basically the n plus 5 and the n minus 4, so that needs to be multiplied on this side. And the n minus 2 is missing the n plus 6, like so. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute these out. I have n times n, it's n squared. I have a negative 4n and a 5n that gives me 1n. And then this will be minus 20. Now I'm going to leave the negative right here because the negative is essentially applied to both these brackets. And so I do that, I'll distribute it out in a second. n times n is n squared. n times 6 is 6n, and a negative 2n gives you a positive 4n minus 12. Okay, so we'll distribute that one out on the next step. Okay, and almost done right here. Now we can go and we can gather our like terms in the numerator. And what do we have? We have n squared. Notice that this would be a negative would be fed in here, here, and here using the distributive property. n squared minus n squared, those are gone. And n minus uh, 4n gives you negative 3n. And negative 20 minus negative 12 gives you minus 8 as your final solution right there. Okay. Uh, last thing I have to end off with you guys is example two here, and it's a word problem. And this is where we're going to be getting in our last uh, lesson. I just thought it might be good to break you in a little bit uh, right now. Um, we're going to be dealing with applications when you guys get to 7.6. Right now, all we're doing is we're just setting up uh, a question. Uh, when we get to 7.6, we'll be solving a question like this. Okay. So example two reads, on a canoe trip, Carolyn paddled upstream a distance of five kilometers. On the return trip downstream, the average speed of the canoe was 5 kilometers per hour greater than its speed upstream. Write and then simplify an expression for Carolyn's total paddling time in terms of the average speed upstream. All right, I recall, and you will likely have learned this in science, that time is equal to the distance divided by your average speed. And so we're going to use this information to help us uh, make an equation for this thing. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a let statement. We often do this when we're dealing with word problems. Let x equal, well, what are we trying to figure out? Uh, write and then simplify an expression for Carolyn's total paddling time. Let's let x represent Carolyn's uh, speed going upstream. So if we do this, well, how far is she going upstream? Well, we know that Carolyn has to travel 10 kilometers, it says right here. So I'm going to write this as 10, okay? And we know that's going to be divided by uh, her speed. And so since we've said x is her speed going upstream, I'm going to have 10 divided by x. Now I'm going to add that to, because they ask, um, what is the total paddling time? Now I have to deal with what uh, her, uh, her time is basically going in the other direction. Well, when she now goes downstream, she's still going 10 kilometers. Only here it says that she's going 5 kilometers greater. So I'm going to write this now as x plus 5. And this will be equal to her total time. We'll just uh, have as t. All right? And so that's all we need to do. Now I'm just going to go and simplify this expression. So when we simplify this expression, we notice that the common denominator we have is x. I'll multiply it by x plus 5. And so you basically multiply the terms at what they're missing. This x is missing an x plus 5. And this 10 is missing a x. We set that equal to time. Gathering my like terms, now we have the 10x plus 50 plus 10x, like so. And gathering this, this gives you 20x plus 50 all over x onto x plus 5. And so I wanted to just get you guys used to seeing some of these. There's not going to be that many in this assignment, but the little note that I made here on the bottom, where is it? is that uh, in the units to come, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to solve one of these, and that we'll be finding out what, for instance, Carolyn's speed was going up and downstream. All right, so that, that's kind of the, the be-all and end-all of this unit. We're using all these different strategies so that we can get to the end and finally use these strategies to uh, deal with real-life applications. Okay, that uh, completes this lesson.